Sexual reproduction, what a fun subject, for many reasons. One for sure is that it completely dumbfounds evolutionists. I get a great kick out of watching them leap through hoops trying to explain how a sexual reproduction could evolve, when in reality there is absolutely no possible way. I know, I know, by saying that I'm guilty of... Personal incredulity. But I just can't help myself. Every paper or YouTube video you read on the subject or view pretends that it is going to explain how sexual reproduction evolved and it winds up explaining why it's good for evolution. How sexual reproduction evolved always disappears from the discussion. Sexual reproduction is full of all-or-none events and who-did-it-first conundrums. They either happen or they don't. There is no middle ground. They can't evolve gradually. Like jumping off a 40-foot bridge, you can't evolve that event. You either go or you don't. And who did it first? The very first living cells on Earth had to figure out a way to procreate immediately. The lifespan of newly living cells would be very short in those boiling hot seas with incredible tides and currents, as the moon was only 25 to 50,000 miles away. If they didn't reproduce, the first generation of cells would die, and that would have been the end of life on Earth. We know that non-living cells of any kind are not able to procreate, even though evolution says they could. So the first living cells had the period of one generation to come up with reproduction. This period held a crisis of unbelievable proportions. So how did these cells come up with a way to procreate in such a short time? Evolution says the first cells were prokaryotes similar to bacteria. And these little devils invented a method called binary fission, an incredibly complex form of asexual reproduction. First their DNA and organelles would replicate, then move to opposite positions in the cell. Cell division in bacteria is controlled by a collection of about 12 proteins that collect around the site of division. The cell then pinches itself off in the center like a clown twisting animal balloons, splitting the cell into two new individual cells. Now we run into a huge all or none event and who was first conundrum. There are two possibilities for how fission came about. One is that trillions of prebiotic cells invented the exact same kind of fission all at the same time. Mathematical probabilities would get in the way of this scenario real quickly. Of course the other scenario is that one single cell invented fission and then procreated rapidly making trillions of copies in a very short time. A sort of Thomas Edison of cells. That would mean that every apple, human, grass, blade, all of life on earth would have that one single Thomas Edison neobiotic cell as its great, great, great grandparent. Which scenario is more believable? What if that one cell that invented binary fission had died? Would the death of one cell mean that the earth would remain sterile forever? Ask your evolution biology instructor. I'm sure they'll have the answer. And of course, fission is an all or none event like the bridge jumper. That is, cells can either split or not split. There is no thousandth of a split, which will lead to two thousandths of a split. A partial split is a worthless endeavor. And life didn't have time to evolve fission, as all of life would die as soon as a single generation died. So neobiotic cells simply didn't have time to evolve fission in small steps the way all of evolution works. If things happened that way, there would be no life on Earth. It would have ended in a flash. What you are watching here is a eukaryote, the next level of cell complexity, performing mitosis, the next level of cell division. These far more complex cells led to the formation of multicellular life. Does mitosis, which is far more complex than fission, look like an event that could come about through selected mutations? Only if you have an incredible imagination. This is such an unbelievably fascinating event to watch. Just think, each of the thousands of individual parts of the cell has to somehow be replicated or know it's time to replicate. Then move into just the correct position in the cell so the cell can do an exact split and each copy will have exactly the correct parts. When I was in school things like mitosis were rather boring subjects that I had to memorize facts about. Now I look at mitosis in complete awe. What you are watching is nothing less than a miracle of nature. And again the question arises, was there a first mitoser, another Thomas Edison cell, who then spread the technique to trillions of other cells? Or did all of the trillions of trillions of individual cells that went on to become eukaryotes evolve the exact same technique independently at about the same time? Ask your evolution biology teacher. I'm sure they will know this one too. Ad hominem attack! Ad hominem attack! 
The new highly evolved eukaryotic cells then had to begin sticking together to make multicellular versions. We don't know why we have not found fossils of the early 16 or 32 or 1,000 celled species, but let's say they did evolve and we are headed towards sexual reproduction. Of course, the question arises how or why did sexual reproduction evolve in the first place? The least efficient, most problematical type of reproduction is sexual. Asexual reproduction is simple and efficient. Survival of the fittest certainly doesn't fit into this scenario. And we run into another all or none event and who was first conundrum. The fact that an entirely new and unbelievably more complex type of fission had to evolve called meiosis for sexual reproduction to begin. During meiosis, a germ cell with a full complement of chromosomes undergoes DNA replication followed by two rounds of division resulting in four cells with half of the required number of chromosomes. These cells can then become gametes or sperm and egg. During sexual reproduction, the gametes recombine into a single cell called a zygote, now with a full complement of chromosomes, half from the male, half from the female. The zygote then grows into a fetus and eventually a full-formed offspring. Of course, meiosis had to be invented by evolution before copulation for the copulation to produce offspring. The huge question here is why would cells with a full complement of chromosomes completely change course and begin splitting its chromosomes? What reason would there be? Did the cells know that if they invented meiosis, sexual reproduction would be the end result? Next we have the evolution of male and female sexual organs in the newly evolved multicellular species. Random mutations and natural selection had to find a reason to split a single species into two distinct and different individuals, male and female. Since the outcome of this process was two individuals with very different matching sexual organs, the selected mutations that formed the female sex organs and those that formed the male organs had to know what each other was doing, what each other was mutating and selecting. The evolution of male and female sex organs had to be an entirely intelligently organized event or else the sexual organs would not match and sexual reproduction would never have been possible or successful. Once we have male and female sexual organs, the all or none and who was first problem for evolution reappears. Copulation is an all or none event. There is simply not any way copulation could evolve. There is no advantage to a ten thousandth copulation or two ten thousandths. God, how frustrating that would be, eh guys? Imagine how grumpy everybody must have been if there were only up to a thousandth of a copulation after five thousand years. And while a copulation was evolving over thousands of years, no offspring would be produced. A full 100% encounter would be required. And the first copulators had to be related to all sexually replicating species today. Or sexual reproduction had to evolve in millions of different species at the same approximate time. And of course, which individual and which species performed the first copulation? Can you imagine what their friends thought that might have been witnesses? The other problem is the which evolved first conundrum. In the male, was it the penis, the testes, the epididymis, the vas deferens? In the female, was it the vagina, the cervix, the uterus? I know evolutionists will say all evolved at the same time, but that would require organization and intelligence, sorry. And now we run into another huge and sticky all or none event. The fertilization of the female egg with the male sperm. Obviously, there are no partial micro steps in this one. It either happens or it doesn't. It's all or none. Reviewing evolution's theories on the formation of sexual reproduction would be a useless endeavor. Some of the major ideas, the lottery principle, the tangled band principle, the red queen principle, and the neo-morin revolution, all try to describe why there is sexual reproduction. No reasonable hypothesis has yet been formulated that can describe how sexual reproduction evolved. The papers all describe why, not how. And sorry, why just does not cut it.